Now, in the final battle for Hogwarts, we introduced the Giants. Now, they are a very good combo because they are real actors wearing real makeup, prosthetic makeup, but they are then digitally enhanced. Their heads are huge, great silicon pieces that are glued on. If we just freeze it here, the face in the center is our original design, as you can see on the concept art, but we've turned that over to visual effects, who've actually animated the face to give the performance. This is primarily because the stuff is so thick and such a ridiculously big thing that the muscles of the actor inside are simply not going to be able to move that much stuff around and deliver a performance. If you look back at the fifth movie, Order of the Phoenix, the giant was, uh, Grawp, was created completely digitally. He was compl uh, completely created within the computer. There wasn't a performer in makeup at all. And on reflection, when we came to do the giants for the final battle of Hogwarts, you know, I made a presentation saying, if we use real people, even if you then have to digitally augment them and make, take it beyond the point where makeup will go, performance-wise, reality-wise, you'll be in a much more grounded place and it will work better. And I think when you view the two together, you can see that this actually, on this occasion, did prove to be the case. Can we rewind now, please? OK, and let's play the film again, please. So the giants are actually shot running on treadmills. They're actually on a, on a computer-controlled treadmill, so we can actually move the camera past them at a known designated speed that will match the perspective of the shot that we're actually dropping them into. This is a classic example of a big second unit night. This is one night shoot, one take, and about two and a half weeks prep. Let's just go back and see the beginning of this shot. And it's a steady cam shot. You can see explosions. A lot of these are the real explosions that happened on the night. It was about a two and a half week rig for special effects in terms of fire, explosions, debris. And then we had the daylight hours of a day to rehearse it. And then we did a couple of takes with Maggie without any explosions. And then we went for the one take with explosions, which we got. Later on, we actually put Maggie on green screen and recreated the move and put her in the perfect place. And we just used her on the night for reference. But it's a spectacular shot and you can feel it's real. And there's a wonderful sense of energy and the sense that the school is now being breached and the action is now going to take place inside the school. OK, let's take it forward from here. Get inside! <laughs> This shot in particular was a dynamic shot that David designed and wanted to take us from outside the battle to the battlements. The idea of the shot is to really link the exterior with the interior so that the audience understands that the fighting is going on at different parts of the school. <laughs> Steve wrote a brilliant line on the staircase, I absolutely loved. Steve picks up Englishisms really cleverly, brilliantly, and he's got Neville down to a T. So um, he says, you haven't seen Luna, have you? And Harry says, no, why? And he says, uh, I'm mad for her. <laughs> and I said to Steve, Steve, you're an American. Will Americans understand I'm mad for her? <laughs> and he said, yeah. <laughs> you haven't seen Luna, have you? Luna? I'm mad for her. I think it's about time I told her since we'll probably both be dead by dawn. Whoa, let's stop there. <laughs> um, this moment actually was never scripted, in which Harry and Ginny kissed, so it was actually a moment completely thrown in by David Yates, um, which I think is really interesting and poignant, because obviously when Ginny says, I know, 
that's basically saying I know how much we love each other without having to go into some really difficult conversation together. I know. Nachi, nachi.